I can hear the questions now. Well, the mind-controlled car is one of many new technologies being developed by engineers and automakers around the world. For more on the future of cars and driving, we welcome back Lauren Fix, the car coach. She's in a car expert and joining uh, us from, of course, my hometown in Seattle. Hey, Lauren, it's good to see you. Um, good to see you. Is this a good idea? I, that scares me. People are so multitasking, and it sounds great on the surface to say, I need to get to work, and the car has you thinking about work, and it drives you to work, except along the way you're thinking, you know, I got to pick up some milk and eggs on the way home, and suddenly it's driving you to the local grocery store. Geez, you know, I have that play tomorrow with that kid, with the kids. I have to make sure to get this project done, and suddenly you're on your way to school. Yeah. We all have a lot going on. I don't know if that's a great idea. It sounds great on the surface. I, I, I think I would be very stressed out. And I think yeah. if you were in a bad mood or you were late to work, could you imagine what the, what the car would do? But now, let, let's be honest, this isn't that crazy of an idea because yeah. we have driverless cars as well that's being developed, right? So that's correct. So are, are we okay with that? Well, I'm not the biggest fan of driverless cars because I enjoy driving. However, there are people that prefer to have a car take them places, especially when they've got a lot going on. Maybe they want to read the paper. That's part of what they do for a living. Um, this is something that's very interesting, and you're not going to really see driverless cars just yet. Yes, they're being tested in many states. There's a lot of restrictions. It's going to be a nightmare for the insurance company. So if you do have one, I'm sure we don't know exactly how this is going to function in everyday life. We do know they work great on highways and stop-and-go traffic, just as we use active cruise control and a lot of other technologies today. However, in the city, when you have people walking across the street, pedestrians, children, animals, that's when you really need to be in control of the vehicle, and the car is not developed to that point yet. Yeah, I, what's wrong? I, I like driving. I don't understand why we're doing all this work to, to not drive. I, I enjoy Agreed. driving. It's very therapeutic. Um, I have a note to self here to talk about Nokia's map business. Uh, yes. They were purchased by uh, a bunch of German car companies for $2.8 billion. Mm -hmm. What is this business about? Why is it so important? Why do we care? This is really interesting. This is BMW, Audi, which is under the VW Group, and Mercedes. So that also includes Mini Cooper because that's under the BMW Group as well as you know, some of the other premium cars like Rolls Royce. So why do we want this? It's because it's a better collaboration of technology that they're going to use Nokia's mapping services. But this is great for V2V, which is vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, which you are going to start seeing coming out in the next year or two. So if there is rush hour traffic, and I don't have that on my live traffic on my navigation. It says, hey, Phil's stuck in traffic, 10 cars in front of me, I'm going to get to know that. If you're stuck in traffic on my route to work that is programmed in, it'll tell me way ahead, more so than if you have on your navigation system or on your phone now. This is also good for future technologies leading to autonomous cars because understanding businesses and where they're located and the pathways of roads this will really help for that in-city drive that we were just discussing. They're still having troubles getting their arms around. Um, speaking of cars, uh, there's been a lot of talk about sort of more fuel efficiency. We've been developing electric cars. We've been doing all this great stuff. Then the oil prices plummet. Right. Do consumers care about the price of oil? I mean, let's, let's be honest. It doesn't seem so to me because we just had the latest data. It showed that people were buying uh, record numbers of SUVs. SUVs and pickup trucks. Yes, they're very hot. Uh, actually, I'm here in Seattle driving the Toyota Tacoma, and I can tell you that this is a very hot vehicle, and they know that their sales are going to be really strong. And why is that? I think consumers aren't impacted by the price of gasoline unless it reaches about $5 a gallon. That's when you start seeing, oh, wait, that, that means I, I can't do that extra thing, that extracurricular activity I chose. The other interesting thing to note is that the price of diesel has dropped dramatically across the U.S. Now, that may not seem like much, but you can tell... Those diesel-powered vehicles that go long distances between Philips and good fuel economy, uh, all the Germans are selling it. Well, now the domestics are starting to say, you know what? GM today said that Colorado and Canyon, their small truck is going to come in diesel. Jeep is selling diesel. And, of course, the Germans are selling diesel. So this is something that we may start seeing more and more of because there isn't just one solution of plug-in cars or hybrids. Yeah. Or fuel efficiency, it's got to be a balance because if you've got diesel, you can tow hey, anything. If hey, hybrids, you can't. Hey, Lauren, I'm going to squeeze in one more question here. Yeah. Uh, the news out of China hasn't been all that great for automakers. Uh, sales have been uh, struggling there. Uh, what's going on, and do we need to worry about this? 
Well, we need to watch it. There's signs of a recession. No one likes that R word. But, I mean, it, it, everyone wants to purchase a car. There's a limited amount of licenses that can be issued. And then, of course, you've got a traffic problem because they don't have highways like we have highways here in the U.S. And part of that is parking and, of course, the cost of owning a vehicle. So we need to monitor that because what we have not seen in China, which we are seeing now, is incentives. And that is concerning. I've also noticed a change of some leadership in certain car manufacturers in China. And that is certainly going to impact sales when their natural reaction is to do what we do here in the U.S. If it's not selling, we'll lower the price and create an incentive. Right. How long will that last? We don't know. Lauren, uh, we're out of time. Good to see you. Have a nice day there in Seattle. At least we learned that Phil's always stuck in traffic.